Hey everybody, welcome to Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I did something a little crazy last week, at least crazy for me anyway. I, um, if you don't know me, I have usually had very long hair most of my life. Um, when I was a child, it was like down to my tush. Uh, I have always had long hair. There's been like two moments in my life when I had really short hair. One really short, which I will never do again. <laughs> but anyway, so I got my hair chopped. I got like four or five inches taken off and I am trying to get used to this short hair. The reason why I did it was because I wanted my hair to be healthy and it was looking a little um, frayed at the ends, I guess. So anyway, I am adjusting to my new hair. Um, but thank you so much for being here and let's dive into today's topic, which is why most people fail to achieve their goal. So it is January 2020 and most people are setting goals this time of year. Maybe you're one of them, but about 20% of people are striving for some sort of achievement, whether it's they're setting a personal goal or a business goal. And what's really surprising is out of the 20% of people who are setting goals, about 80% fail. That's staggering. That's a huge number. It's amazing that any goals are actually really achieved. So there are typically four areas that we tend to group our goals into. It's either wealth, right? We want to increase that money in the bank. Maybe we want to save up for a trip or maybe we want to pay off that college tuition for our kids or ourselves. Um, you, health is another one. Maybe you want to lose 10 to 50 pounds. You want to have more energy. Maybe you want to look great in a swimsuit or have a flatter stomach. Number three is relationships. You want to communicate maybe better with your partner. Maybe you want to have an open communication with your teenagers. Maybe you just want to have a larger circle of friends. And then the fourth one is some sort of self-fulfillment. So satisfaction in what you can achieve and what you say you want, like being happier or being at peace. So those all four kind of gel together in usually self-fulfillment actually kind of falls into place with all the other ones. But generally speaking, those are the four that we tend to pick as goals. So here are some of the top reasons why most people fail to achieve their goal. So this is huge. Um, fear of failure is a huge reason that people fail to achieve their goals. Thoughts like, what if I can't do all my workouts? What about I love alcohol too much to give it up? How can I not have a drink for the next 12 weeks? Or, I'm a failure if I don't overeat. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm a failure if I do overeat one day. Interestingly, fear of success is even more prevalent than fear of failure. Thoughts that clients have said to me like, when I lose the weight, how will I keep it off? What will people say about me when I'm thinner? What if I get unwanted attention when I'm leaner? These are all very real and legit thoughts that could be holding you back from getting your goals. So fear is really huge because you can't win if you're afraid of failing and you're afraid of succeeding. This leads into the next point of why people fail to achieve their goals. This is a big one. Uh, I personally deal with this one a lot too, but it's analysis paralysis. Do you ever get to the point in your goal plan and you think, mm, this is really not working, or maybe I chose the wrong plan? Then you start ruminating over what you think you should or shouldn't have done. And then you become so confused, you become essentially brain paralyzed and do nothing. Welcome to analysis paralysis. <laughs> Stewing over a decision will delay you getting to your goal. The longer you spend in confusion land, the more confused you will get. This is very similar to what I call going down the rabbit hole. It's very easy to start off with one little thing and then slowly spiral down the hole until you're like in the fetal position crying about every aspect of your life and <laughs> having a pity party, right? Very common. So if you do it, don't think you're alone. Very common. So this is your brain trying to sabotage you and it's trying to keep you safe in the imaginary cave that your brain thinks you're still in. 
So if you've been following me on YouTube or Facebook for any length of time, I know these podcasts are new, so this is all new information, but I talk about how you have two parts of your brain. They are controlling your thoughts, your feelings, and therefore your actions and inactions. So your primitive brain is your lower brain. Sometimes it's called primal brain, but its job is basically to feed you, to seek pleasure, to keep you alive, and to procreate. That is it. Your lower brain is always, always going to try to keep you safe in the cave. It doesn't want you to venture out. It wants you to stay put. So thoughts might come in like, don't venture out because you're for sure going to die. Don't make any big scary goals because we're good here. What's wrong with here? We're comfortable. It's all good. You don't need to change. You need to eat cake. Yeah, that'll be a much better than the goal that you want of feeling good in your clothes. Eating cake will make you feel just as good, if not better, than that that goal that you have. This is your brain. This is how your brain works. It may not be those exact words, but something along those lines is coming up for you when you are, it, it's right after the point you make the goal, and then your brain goes, oh, that's awesome. And then all of a sudden your brain starts spinning and being like, yeah, it's not so awesome. Let's let's stay in the cave. It's not, it's not a good idea. <laughs> then... Um, the other side of your brain that um, it, it, it helps make your decisions is called your prefrontal cortex. I like to call this your sophisticated brain. So this is the brain side that wants you to not only have big dreams and goals, but it wants you to accomplish them. This is your cheerleader. This is your motivator. This is your inspiration. This is the side of the brain that you want to tap into all day long. The problem is... Your primitive brain, your lower brain, will automatically always try to run the show. Your primitive brain is the one that is putting you in indecision. So how do you come oh, how do you overcome your brain? This is the major reason why most people fail to achieve their goals. You need to make a decision and go for it, no matter what the outcome. So if you've committed for a year to work with a trainer or a coach, you are in 100% no matter what for that year. Make sure you pick the right coach and make sure you have the right program that's customized for you. But go all in. A lot of times we pick goals and we get started on them and like the first two weeks, maybe the third week, all of a sudden you're like, eh, this is not working for me. This is not a good idea. Man, that lower brain is talking to you saying, run back in the cave. Run back before you get eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. It's not safe out here. <laughs> that brain is going to sabotage you every single time. So tap into that sophisticated brain. So there are motivating factors as to your goals. So generally there are only two reasons why we do anything. Number one it will bring pleasure. Number two, you are avoiding pain. So we go back and forth between pleasure and, and avoiding pain, pleasure and avoiding pain. That's all day long, <laughs> right? The pleasure principle is like, for instance, when you come home from work and you pour a glass of wine or you dive into a bag of cookies or you just don't want to get off the couch, you're looking for pleasure. You're looking for a reward. You're, you feel like you deserve this after hard days of work. Your brain will always, always, always choose this option over any other option that's available. Avoidance of pain is the other option. And for instance, say you've just gone to your doctor and you've been told you must drop 50 pounds or you're going to have full-blown diabetes or cancer or some other life-threatening disease. If you want to avoid the awfulness of this disease, you bet your butt you're going to be on the computer Googling everything and anything you could possibly do to make that diagnosis go away. And money will no longer be an issue and neither will not having enough time. You will find the time and you will find the money to make sure that that life-threatening disease stays away. So when you're faced with the choice of staying in bed or going to work out, 
like for instance we're in january and new jersey typically is cold we've had some warm days but generally speaking it's pretty cold in the morning and not many people want to get out to, out of bed to go work out so your brain for sure will want to pick let's stay in bed that's a great idea it's warm it's comfortable let's stay here it's more pleasurable right the workout is not going to be pleasurable it's going to probably be uncomfortable you're going to have to put workout clothes on that are snug you're going to have to move your body in ways that you probably are not comfortable with and the workout might be painful so your body your brain is going to avoid pain so it's going to be like yeah, no workout pleasure pleasure is good the other thing too is say you're at work and you're really hungry and you're in a hurry and you are stuck between having a candy bar or a healthy meal guaranteed your brain is going to be like yeah candy bar that's a great option <laughs> right um there's also an element too of the candy bar that like the sugar increases your dopamine and that's a whole nother topic for another podcast which i will get into later on but your brain is always going to pick pleasure right it doesn't want to eat the healthy food if it's got like the sugary candy right in front of you it's always going to pick the candy bar so mastering your mind is really key to getting all that you say you want i work daily with clients on this mastering your mind i even work on it on me still okay so it's not like once you know what's that phrase uh once done that's not the right phrase but <laughs> like when you do it once you might have to do it again um like i find that sometimes you know i might have mastered this one aspect of what's been holding me back and i'll be like oh good i got that and you know you kind of put it off to the side and then something will come along later on and kind of nudge it and you're like oh wait a minute i gotta go back and revisit that and kind of understand it a little better so you will be constantly working on mastering your mind it's not like you know you get this little gift and that's it and then you just put it on the shelf so the key is to really getting into your mind and knowing that that primitive brain is always 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 going to choose the easiest the most pleasurable option that's available to you so if you can overcome your primitive brain and live in that sophisticated brain you will achieve your goals for sure thank you so much for listening to the podcast today if you could do me a favor if you are loving the podcast you head over to itunes and give me a quick review let me know what you love about the podcast i can't wait to read your review remember to get fit be fierce and have no limits and i will talk to you next week have a wonderful week take care